There we go. All right. Well, welcome everyone to the press conference for the winners of the 2021 Food Trucking Awards by the World Food Travel Association. My name is Eric Wolf, and I serve as the Executive Director of the World Food Travel Association. And in the next 20 minutes or so, we'll meet some of the winners and we'll look at all of the winners as case studies to see what was so special about their submissions and why they won in the categories in which they did. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce to you a little bit about what the Food Trucking Awards are all about. The phrase food trekking comes from food and travel. Trekking in English is a synonym for going around, wandering around, and it was a name that our association created more than a decade ago, and it's still a, a fun name that we like to use, and we've used it for the awards. The awards themselves were started in 2016, and we are now in the sixth edition of the yeah. awards. The Applications typically open in the springtime and the winners are announced in the fall. And in the past, we have given winners recognition at our Innovation Summit, which takes place in London. But of course, things have had to change for the past couple of years. So far, we've had 65 winners in 28 countries and in a variety of categories. We have changed the categories from year to year to really suit the times of how things are changing. And the judges for the awards are a confidential panel of five individuals that are comprised of different people. We don't disclose their names because of uh, we don't want to have any kind of preferential treatment or anything like that. So we, we keep them confidential, but they are comprised of uh, members of our board of directors, ambassadors of our associations and or industry <coughs> leaders who we invite to be panelists. The next awards applications will open on March the 1st, and we are going to make available a PDF copy of this presentation. And in the PDF, you will see hyperlinks, and you will be able to click on those hyperlinks to get to the information that you need for your stories. So um, I would first like to introduce Preidelhof Resort in Italy. and. Um, you can see a little bit about their winning there. Now I have prepared a little uh, statement about them and it's also on my computer. So now I have to, to use it from my phone because otherwise you would be seeing my notes on the phone. So let me just pull it up here very quickly. Okay. So for Prydelhof, we have Patricia Bordelin, who is here with us today. The resort had just launched a new wellness plan a week before lockdown. While it was an unfortunate time to launch such a new program, the stillness of the lockdown afforded the property time to further develop its concept. Drawing on consumer trends, research, and other inputs, the resort introduced a new food philosophy that transformed its food and beverage experiences to focus on overall guest wellness within a mindful eating experience. And I would like to invite Patricia, who is here with us, to say a few words about the award and her application and what it meant to the resort. Nore, buongiorno, and thank you very much for this wonderful award. We are absolutely proud of it. And also, I'm happy about this uh, category, the Best Hustle Award, because it really represents what happened uh, for us uh, in, in the, last, uh, the last year. And so we uh, we uh, seen as a uh, situation was that, so we decided to uh, create really uh, an eating philosophy. So keeping uh, keeping uh, engaged all the team and all the professionals. So from the wellness uh, area, so therapists, psychologists, coaches, um, and uh, also our um, wellness chefs and the, the some people of the of the of the kitchen staff. So we practically created this uh, um, philosophy that combines uh, mindful eating. There is more on the meditation and mindfulness, being aware of what we eat, that's very popular, together with sensory analysis. So, like being uh, becoming like coffee sommelier or uh, wine sommelier, knowledge sommelier. So, these two um, techniques together, together with our wellness uh, values. So, we could uh, really create a beautiful experience to talk about during the whole year to train a lot. So we have engaged amazing uh, uh, trainers, um, academics and uh, some specialists and coaches during this, uh, this process. And so we could really keep our, our um, concept uh, uh, contemporary alive and new and really create something innovative and be all, stay all motivated and keep also the, the interest on our 
um, products, so it is the, the price of resort uh, quite high. So it's been really beautiful, and, and it, it, the result is now we are I'm now uh, seeing guests coming to experience this uh, this um, uh, eating philosophy and the whole um, wellness concept, and it is really beautiful. So I think uh, I'm very proud of this best hustle in the world and uh, and. Uh, this new way of uh, connecting wellness uh, and, uh, and food philosophy and the food offer of hospitality uh, resorts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patricia. Well, looking at the application and a lot of the photos that were submitted with it, it looks like a, a wonderful experience. So I certainly hope to, to get there one day and experience in person. It looks like a lovely, lovely part of Italy. Grazie, thank you very much. My pleasure. So next we have the Best Virtual Food and Beverage Experience Award with Local Food Adventures in Oakland, California, USA. And um, I did hear that Lauren from the company was going to join us, but I don't know if she's here. Uh, she might be in, in as a panelist. Could, could you check the chat messages to see if Lauren is, is in the room? Nothing from Lauren. Okay, so uh, let me just summarize the application that they submitted. In early 2020, with the pandemic worsening day by day, Lauren knew her company would have few to no sales in the foreseeable future. Rather than wallowing in despair and waiting for things to improve or end, Lauren thought fast. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Lauren used her knowledge of the local Oakland, California food scene to build a new product portfolio around ice cream with a special nod to the Rocky Road flavor, which was invented in Oakland. Lauren's company offered online ice cream socials, another longtime American summer pastime. Apart from these social gatherings, she also brainstormed the Build the Most Creative New Ice Cream Sunday contest. With lots of fun and full bellies all around the area and beyond, Lauren put smiles on the faces of worried food lovers while also enhancing her company's brand. And I think that what really, um, what the judges, what impressed them was that it wasn't just a send a food box out type campaign. A lot of food tour operators did that and, and it was a, a great pivot for many of them. But what she did, she, she really focused on a specific product. She focused on something that was uh, created in her own town. And uh, I think when you talk about ice cream, I, there's not many people I know who don't love ice cream. So I think it was a really brilliant move. But also the fact that because it was so successful, it really helped to boost her brand. And she got a lot of corporate business from this, this campaign, which she was not expecting at first. So it was truly successful for her. And we wish her all the best with her award. And now, next, we have the Comune di Bucheri in Sicilia, Sicily, Italy. And um, for Bucheri, we've written, um, <clears throat> and oh, also I must say that Natasha Owen is representing the mayor's office and will be acting as our interpreter. So in this particular award, I will be um, reading in English. Natasha will then translate into Italian. And then the mayor who's with us, Mr. Alessandro there, will speak in Italian and then Natasha will translate to English for us. Um, Natasha, I have uh, a short uh, two, two sentences. I'll stop after each one to give you a break to translate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the community could no longer organize events where, uh, which are a traditional and excellent way to promote an area's food and beverage products and experiences. Purtroppo, durante la pandemia, la, il comune di Bucheri non poteva organizzare questi eventi che, che sono metodi tradizionali per promuovere uh, l'eccellenza enogastronomia. Instead, they work behind the scenes focusing on traditional brands, seven traditional and quality products, and traditional recipes. Invece, hanno lavorato dietro le quinte per promuovere questi sette uh, prodotti tradizionali, i PAT, e, uh, e anche, anche altri cibi tradizionali. And despite the restrictions, the municipality was also able to host the 20th year of its mushroom exhibition. E malgrado le restrizioni dalla pandemia, 
il Comune ha potuto anche fare la mostra, il ventesimo dell'annuale dei, dei funghi. Such efforts have shown the creativity and resiliency of the town to do what it takes to survive and compete during this difficult time. Questo lavoro, questi sforzi hanno dimostrato la creatività e la resilienza di un comune, di un, di un paese a trovare um, eh, strade per andare avanti durante questi tempi difficili. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Cagliazzo, Mayor of Bucari, to say a few words. Quindi, Sindaco, signor Sindaco, siamo pronti. Grazie e buongiorno a tutti. Eh, noi siamo eh, felici di questo prestigioso premio eh, che anche come accennato è frutto di un lavoro di squadra eh, che è volto proprio alla promozione del nostro territorio. Un territorio che è legato eh, profondamente ai prodotti tradizionali e ad alla, alla, alla nostra enogastronomia d'eccellenza. Eh, oggi inizia eh, anche grazie a questo riconoscimento un ulteriore percorso di promozione del nostro comune eh, come migliore destinazione culinaria del mondo. E, um, ulteriore percorso che si unisce eh, al lavoro che già è stato fatto eh, e ad ulteriori riconoscimenti che ripaga i nostri, che ripaga i nostri produttori anche del grande eh, lavoro fatto con i prodotti d'eccellenza, primo fra tutti eh, l'olio extravergine d'oliva, eh, un prodotto eh, molto importante per il comune di Buccheri che nell'anno 2015 lo ha reso capitale mondiale dell'olio extravergine di qualità. Oltre a questo, nel 2018 abbiamo ottenuto il primo posto eh, nazionale come meta d'eccellenza sempre nel settore eh, enogastronomico, eh, nel prestigioso concorso 100 Meti d'Italia. Nel 2019 i sette prodotti PAT eh, che vengono riconosciuti come prodotti eh, agroalimentari tradizionali eh, tutelati dalla, dal Ministero per le politiche agricole, eh, alimentari e forestali e, e adesso eh, di qualche giorno fa la notizia è che il comune di Buccheri è rientrato nel club come uno dei porti più belli d'Italia quindi tanti riconoscimenti e, e questo ultimo eh, della, della World eh, Food Travel Association che si unisce diciamo, a quelli già uh, a quelli già ottenuti. Got that, Natasha? Thank you. Um, so we are delighted uh, to accept this prestigious award that is the result of a true team effort dedicated to the promotion of our territory, a territory that is all about traditional products and excellence in food and wine. Today begins an exciting new stage in the promotion of our municipality, our comune, as the world's best culinary destination. And it's the latest stage in our journey to promote Bukeri, building on existing achievements and with today's recognition, rewarding our many local producers for all their hard work in creating products of excellence, primarily premium extra virgin olive oil. In fact, Bukeri has been world capital of quality extra virgin olive oil since 2015. In 2018, it was awarded Destination of Excellence and first place in the national rankings in the prestigious competition 100 Destinations for and obtained the recognition of seven of its products as traditional Italian food products, that's the PAT um, brand, in the Ministry of Food and Agriculture's PAT list. And in the last few days only, Bukeri has become one of the 313 certified most beautiful small towns in Italy. So this award today really completes a series of, uh, of recognitions um, that repay a lot of the hard work done by many people. Thank you. And I would also like to acknowledge Francesca Ercolini, who is here, and she was the person behind the application for the Comune. E gli organizzatori vogliono anche riconoscere il lavoro di Francesca Ercolini che è con noi oggi e che lei ha fatto molto del lavoro a promuovere questa, questa applicazione. So I wish you all the best. Congratulations on all of your hard work. You have been uh, truly, it is an inspiring destination what you have done and I wish you all the best and I hope to visit one day as well. 
e dice che vi manda tante congratulazioni per questo premio e anche per il vostro lavoro. Riconosce il tanto lavoro che è stato fatto da, dalla vostra squadra e che spera di poter venire a, a trovarvi in, un giorno. Wonderful, thank you. So next we will talk with, um, well, I don't know if Jen is here. Um, Jen, are you in the room? If you are, can you say something in the chat? Is anyone in the chat? Can you check for me? Is she there? No? Okay. Let me read what I wrote about Jen, a very interesting case study. Jen is a local food activist in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan. She is also a storyteller. Using her inborn ability to craft beautiful stories across diverse media, Jen was able to paint a wonderful picture of the province's culinary treasures. More than just a journal of beautiful food pictures and recipes, Jen weaves in what matters to consumers and travelers today. Discussion of food systems, food security, support for the First Nations Indigenous peoples, and while, all while preserving and promoting the local culinary cultures. And you see here, she's been involved in her flat out food project. And it's, it's a very interesting study because the, of the book that she created, it was not like a travel guide. It was not like a food guide. It really talked about the food systems and the food cultures. And that is very much in alignment with what we do here at the association. So it was a, an award, I think, that really stood out in a class by itself, the, the application that is. So I would like to also acknowledge the runners up. So these are the second place winners in the different categories. It was a very difficult year for the judges because there were so many excellent applications. And sometimes it was just uh, a matter of one or two points that, that made the, the person get the first, uh, the business get the first place versus the second place. So it was very, very difficult for the judges this year. So for the second uh, place award for the best hustle was Venisa restaurant in Italy. For the best culinary storyteller, second place was the gastronomy club of Epirus, which is in Greece. For the best virtual F&B experience, second place was Tori Ave, and she's based in the US, but she focuses a lot on Israel and the Mediterranean. And then for the best culinary destination, second place, we have the Associazione Regionale Strada dell'Olio DOP Umbria. I don't know how to say DOP in Italian. So <laughs> anyway, it is the um, regional association of uh, an olive oil DOP route, basically, in the um, region of Umbria in Italy. And they also put together a very good application. So the journalists who will be receiving this PDF can click on these links and get to those websites if they wish to meet those people. And that is it. I would like to see if there are any questions from anyone attending today. No? All right. Well, with this, I would like to conclude the press conference today. Thank you very much to everyone for attending. And again, a huge congratulations to all of the winners for your hard work. We recognize it. We appreciate you. And we wish you all the best in your business for coming out of the pandemic and for a much better, healthy, and successful 2022. Thank you very much.